welcome viewers to the second episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the August 2023 Science Paper 2, which is Chemistry. If you are new to this channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button so that you are able to get the notification each time I upload the new content. If you find this video to be helpful, consider liking it, sharing, and also comment and which content would you like me to cover. So let us dive straight into question 7. Question A7, an element X forms an ion, this is an ion with positive 3 charge, it has a mass number of 16, then atomic number of 27, what is the number of electrons, neutrons and protons in this ion? So the question is asking us to find the number of electrons, neutrons and protons in this ion. Okay. So, what does 27 mean? 27 is the number of protons in that particular element. So, the first thing that I'm going to look at, under the protons, I'll look for where there's no 27. So, B is out and D is out. So, I remain with A and D, C. Then, what does the positive 3 mean? So, the positive 3 means this element has lost 3 electrons. Hence, it has remained with a net positive charge which is three positives so meaning the electron should be less by three so it will be 27 minus 3 which is 24 so we need to have 24 electrons so a is out remain if only c then what is the number of neutrons so the number of neutrons will be the difference between 60 and 27, which is equal to 33. So you notice that this is the 3 which is correct and C is the correct answer. So this is how you answer question A7. Question A8, which of the following is not a characteristic of an acid? So which one is not a characteristic of an acid? A has a sour taste. This is one of the characteristics. B produces a hydroxide ion, which is this one when dissolved in water. This is incorrect. So, B should be what is not correct. This is a characteristic of a base, not an acid. When an acid dissolves in water, it produces a hydronium ion, which is charge, which is this one. So, this is a hydronium ions not hydroxide ion hence b is which one which is not correct if you see c c reacts with a metal carbonate to produce a salt water and carbon dioxide gas which is correct when you react an acid with him, a carbonate will give you three products salt water and carbon dioxide d turns a blue litmus paper red which is a correct so B is the one which is incorrect. Question A9. Which statement explains why salt do not conduct electricity in a solid state? So why solid state? A. The delocalized electrons in salts are not free and not mobile in solid state. So this one is typically true for metals, not salts. So in metals, the outermost electrons can move freely and are often referred to as delocalized electrons. These free moving electrons allow metals to conduct electricity. So this A is incorrect. It would have been true if we are talking about metals. Then B, the ions in salts are not free and are not mobile in solid state. So you see the ions. So B should be correct. But let us confirm we've seen. They are free and mobile ions in them which help conduct electricity in solid state. This is not correct. The question is telling us why they do not conduct electricity. But this one is talking about conducting electricity. D, they have free and mobile delocalized electrons in solid state. This is for metals. So again, D is incorrect. So B is the correct answer. Question 18. 
When strongly heated, calcium carbonate decomposes according to the chemical equation shown. So we have calcium carbonate decomposing to calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Given that 500 grams of calcium carbonate were th thermally decomposed, calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas produced at room temperature. So we are looking for the volume of carbon dioxide produced. So the first thing is we need to check whether this equation is chemically balanced. So we have one calcium, then we have one calcium balanced. We have one carbon dioxide, then we have one carbon dioxide balanced. Then we have three oxygen, then we have one plus two, which is three. So this is chemically balanced. So since the equation is chemically balanced, then what we need to do is we just need to work with the numbers. So what this implies is if you have one more of calcium carbonate, we produce one more of calcium oxide and one more of carbon dioxide. So what we need to do is we need to find the number of moles that are in 500 grams of calcium carbonate. So the number of moles is given by mass given we divide it by relative molecular mass so what we need to find is the relative molecular mass of calcium carbonate once we do that then we are going to use this relation if one more of calcium carbonate produces one more of carbon dioxide then whatever number of moles that are contained in this is will be the moles of carbon dioxide produced but if you go to the periodic table, we know that one mol occupies or is equivalent to 24 decimeter cubic of gas at room temperature. So if we know the number of moles of carbon dioxide, it will just be now number of moles multiplied by 24 decimeter cubic. Because in per every one mol we have this volume. Then by doing that, then we find the volume of carbon dioxide. So let us find the molecular mass of calcium carbonate. So if we come here, we have one calcium. So we go to calcium. So the calcium is in the mass number is 40. So it will be 40 multiplied by 1 because there is only one calcium like this. Then plus carbon, we go to carbon, which is now this one. So carbon is 12, so it will be just 12 multiplied by 1 because it's 1. Then we come to oxygen. Oxygen, there are 3. So it will be now 3 times oxygen is the mass number is 16. Then once we do that, we use our calculator. What we are going to discover is this is 14. So if you come here, then we use this space down here. So it will be 40 times 1, which is 40 plus uh, 12 times 1 which is 12 then plus in 3 times 16 which is 48 this gives me 100 so 100 grams so 100 grams is the mass number of calcium carbonate so based on that I've been given 500 so it will be 500 divide divide 100 so this this so this gives me 5 moles or 5.0 so 5.0 moles so if we have this moles what it means is here if I'll write on top here if you have 5 moles then even here we have 5 moles even here we have 5 moles because eh, the balance equation is 1 to 1 to 1 so now since we know the number of moles of carbon produced to find the volume produced what we do is now like I said here we use this formula so now it will be 5 times 24 decimeter cubic so once we, we do that multiplication what are we going to end up with because remember the calculator is allowed so it will be 5 times 4 it will be 20, we write 0, carry 2, 5 times 2 is, is 10, plus 2 is 120. So we are going to have 120 decimeter cubic.
this will be the answer. So you notice that A is the correct answer in this case. So for question 10, A is the correct answer. So this is how you answer these questions. So join me in the next episode as I look at question 11 going forward.